Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about bubble sort in two parts: the theoretical part in implementation in sorting an array. To begin with, let me tell you why bubble sort is called bubble sort. When we pour out a can of soft drink in a cup, we can see bubbles on the top. A bubble goes up from the bottom. What will happen if it meets a smaller bubble? It swaps the position with the smaller bubble. It repeats until all bubbles are in the correct level, which means the biggest bubbles should be at the top, and the smaller bubbles should be at a lower level. Therefore, the bubble sort is in descending order. The concept of bubble sort. Is to compare two values at a time. If value A is larger than value B, swap the order of A and B. If it's not, remain no change. Then check the next pair of value and repeat till the end of the value list. After the first pass, the largest value must be at the last place of the whole element list. The second pass. We'll put the second largest value at the second last place, and so on. Some of you may recognize that every element is scanned while comparing the values, which is a time and resource-consuming action. Besides, swapping the values is very costly either, as we have to copy the value A into a variable temp to store it temporarily first. And copy the value B into the place where value A was in. Then copy the value in tem into the place of value B was in. So these two are the main disadvantages of bubble sort. Then, why are we still learning such a silly sorting algorithm? The bubble sort is the easiest sorting algorithm to understand. And it is a good start to learn sorting algorithm, other than bubble sort. Now, let's move on to the implementation part of sorting an array using bubble sort. Firstly, we have an array containing nine, two, one, three, four. Let's call it array A. We have to use a double for loop to count the array index to do the comparison. The outer loop, which starts at zero, is used to count the number of passes of sorting the array. It ends until the end of the array. Please note that the i counter starts from zero, so to loop the whole array of five elements, the i counter counts from zero to four. Or you can write i is smaller or equal to a dot length minus one. The inner loop is to keep track on the array index to do the comparison. The leaving condition is j is smaller or equal to a dot length minus one minus one, or you can write j is more than a dot length minus one. As the array in Java starts from zero and the j counter starts from zero, in this example. We compare a j with a j plus one, which is comparing nine with two. Since nine is greater than two, so swap nine with two. The order is now two, nine, one, three, four. Then do the j plus plus. J is now one. Now we compare the、um, nine with one, since nine is greater than one. Then swap. J plus plus, and the order now is two, one, nine, three, and four. Oh, it's important that the J plus plus must be done after executing codes under a loop, not before the codes, not between the codes. Order is now two, one, three, nine, four. Now we compare nine with four. Since nine is greater than four, then swap j plus plus, and the order now is two, one, three, four, and nine. 
as the J loop end, we go out to the outer I loop to do I++, which is the second pass. So, now we have the I is 1 and J is 0. Since 2 is greater than 1, swap. J++, the order is now 1, 2, 3, 4, and 9. J++, um, since 2 is more than 3, no swapping. 3 is more than 4, no swapping. 4 is more than 9, no swapping. Leave the J loop, I++, plus plus. I is now 2. The order is now 1, 2, 3, 4, and 9. Although the array is already sorted, the algorithm continues. The array is sorted, but the cogs still run without any swapping. The I is larger than the size of the array, so this loop ends. So let's see the result on the left hand side in that bit. Thanks for watching.